congratulations! You are at the right place at the right time to start your day with a lightning bolt of energy. Most news programming, morning talk shows, or other podcasts are not launching you into your day or accessing even a fraction of your greatness and potential. If you want more money in less time with more magic, and if you want to find what works to scale your sales and business with the actionable formula of formulas, then the unblinded huddle is the number one way to start your day with an infusion of integrity-based human influence. With your host, Sean Callagy and the Unblinded team, and the entire Unblinded movement. Hey, good morning, everybody. Sean Callagy here, and welcome on behalf of the entire Unblinded team and my co-host, Fran of Valencia, Vivian Guzman out there, hopefully. What's up, everybody? Good morning, and it is Ecosystem Merger and Mastery Monday. So, Fernando, what is present for you? I love the fact that this is Ecosystem Merger and Mastery Monday because all I can think about is how many ecosystems am I counting, how many sales meetings am I having, how many appointments are we setting, how much revenue are we generating, and we are stepping into the powerful world of process mastery. And my question is, what is everybody counting? What are we doing? And how can we accelerate together? So that's what's present for me Monday morning, Sean. Yeah. And for those that are out there, there's a formula. And Fernando, what is the formula? How would you explain it to people if this is their first day out there? The unblended results formula is the formula to achieve any result you want in life. That's not a hyperbole, that it's a fact, because it's broken up into three parts. Self-mastery, influence mastery, and process mastery. Awesome. So let's jump in and talk a little about process mastery. And for those of the mastery students that we're just on, we're going to tell the Coach Slazak story in a moment. So Fernando, do not let me forget to tell the Coach Slazak story about love, what love and accountability looks like. So I was having a nice conversation with everybody um, generated by a question from Erica, which I'll bring up here. But before we do that, here's my question for everybody. Um, right now, we define, um, and by the way, Vivian, uh, is Vivian out there? Yes. Vivian is here. Vivian, what's up? How are you? I'm wonderful. It is <laughs> great to hear your voice this morning. How was your weekend? Amazing. Yeah, and what was, uh, what was your favorite, well, not your favorite, but something that you really appreciated and was really fun this weekend? Uh, let's see. I, well, one thing that was really heartwarming, I'll start with that one actually, is that my mom called me up at around six o'clock and she lives in a home about 10, 15 minutes away from me and she doesn't eat red meat. So she was about to just whip out some bread and just eat bread. And I was like, uh-uh, that's not happening. Well, I can cook and make beautiful food. So I went and I rushed and I got a chicken rice and beans and I brought it to her and I was a little hero for the day and it made my heart so happy. <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. I hear the love. I hear the pride, I hear the connection. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And so, yeah. Um, so Vivian, you know what I was up to this weekend? Tell me. So a couple of the heartwarming parts were just talking to my kids about like where we are, what's happening, reflecting a little bit on some things that were not great about some high school athletics, things that were great, the lessons that came out of them, you know, for them, for all of us. Um, got a chance to jump in the ocean on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, it was still in the uh, somewhere ranging between about 49 and 51, depending on the days. So that was a cold water plunge plus. So that was fun. Uh, and intensely, um, I worked till about two o'clock in the morning um, from Saturday into Sunday, and then all day Sunday. And I want to thank the incredible team that was involved in that. And certainly uh, Mona, uh, Jessica, uh, and Shannon, who were really uh, high contributors in some of the edits, the evolutions, the processes, as well as Fernando for some work he did over the weekend, of course, Jared and Adam. And there was just a lot of intensity going on. Oh, and of course, Nicole, Lorelai, the entire team crushing it and making things happen. And what the byproduct was, was the creation of the explanation of what the real raw role play is and why somebody wanna be a judge or a participant. And by the way, Vivian, how have your experiences been like co-hosting the real raw role play? It has been, amazing and exciting and it's great to see how difficult it is to come in as a contestant and uh, it also gets your mind seeing how everything works from everybody's perspective or role even as judge so yeah. it's really thrilling 
And what would you say has been your biggest learning experience from the real raw? Um, that we have to sharpen our skills. I think when Deepak came up and he showed us what it could be like when you come in ready, prepared, and, and ready to, to really roll up your sleeves before you pick up the phone and call someone, you have to have intention. Yeah, love it. And he, he, his skills were sharp. He was wildly intentioned, hyper prepared. Um, practice not only in scripting, but in mastery and delivery. Agree? Agreed. Yeah, so crushing it. So for everybody today, what we're going to talk about um, is a little bit of the real raw, um, the unblinded business accelerator, but, but most focused on you currently, like where you are. And so let's break it down to its most simple because Fernando gave me a little challenge. He said, listen, the huddles have been fun and we're having a real you know, good time. And there's definitely depth of like things happening, but let's like make sure we have teaching points for people. So let's drop in with a teaching point for people. Your process mastering. So first we have to decide our goals and outcomes. And let's all just like have a little fun and say like, what's your outcome? How much money do you know how much money you want to make in 2020? Straight up. Like how much money you want to make in 2020? And how much is it? Do you know how much money you want to invest, save and invest, accumulate in 2020? Do you know? And how much is it? Do you know what your desire is for your free time in 2020? Example, here's my desire. Work like a lunatic, right? More specifically, I'm ready to work 80, 90 hours a week. This past week, my best calculus is I worked about 90 hours. You go, I don't want to work 90 hours. I'm like, that's cool. Like I've, I've had periods of time where I've worked zero hours for three months. And it's an amazing, cool place to be. That's not what I'm doing right now with my time and magic, but I know what it is. I also know that, um, and I'm going to choose to believe for the sake, not for the sake of my business, but for the sake of my fun, for the sake of my business, I'm choosing to believe nothing is normal for the next two years. For the sake of my fun, I'm choosing to believe that in August, we're going to be going to Grand Cayman. And I'm going to go to Grand Cayman with my kids, with my sister, my niece and nephew, you know, my godson, my mom. It's going to be amazing. A beautiful and incredible time. And like, I'm psyched to know that when I'm there, like I'm going to be off that week and I'm going to do nothing. And I'm going to detach. Normally I'd be detaching for a couple of days a week, you know, after, after I had built my business ownership structure, meaning I wasn't an operator. I was an actual owner where the business flowed and worked without me touching it. And there's certain parts of my business that are like that now and certain parts of my business like I'm blinded that are not like that right now. And those are intentional, those are choices. You have those same choices. So in your time, what are your choices for 2020? If your choice is to go from arduous to momentum to abundance in your finance, finances to make more money and considerably more money, then my recommendation to you is for 2020 to really commit and make agreements with the people you love about a different structure around your time, a different structure around your time. I've done that. Everybody knows and understands that I love what's up. And everybody knows and understands that with me being as zone action focused as I am, we can't have a conversation about like the cleaning person in Long Beach Island or Rivervale or their hours or something happened. Do we need a new cleaning person? We can't have those conversations during the work day, like time blocking. There's times we have those conversations. The time is organized and structured. And it doesn't look like conversations about, hey, you know what? Do you, like, what do you think about Grand Cayman? When should we go? Like, those conversations don't happen during the day. Like, my mom helps, like, plan those trips with me. I love her to no end. And we're clear like, that those conversations don't happen except in scheduled timings. Like, so my time, I've made decisions. It's not randomized. It's just not randomized. And I've been in non-randomized time for quite a long time. And it's interesting because the people that love me will be like, yeah, but you're late all the time. I agree. And I, I could tighten that. But what I'm, I am certainly in meaningful time blocks and I may go long on my time blocks and that's my growth area, but I am definitely in time blocks. But a separate question would be, separate question could be, 
how could I, how can you optimize your time blocks? How can you optimize your time blocks? And for all of you that are feeling a little bit overwhelmed, you don't have to learn all this today. Like this is the language that we condition in. Because the great um, flaw of professional development and personal development that is not the flaw of athletic, musical, um, performing arts teaching is tips and new versus depth and, and conditioning. Here, we are going from, we are, our aspiration is unconscious competence. Unconscious competence. It's why Al Pacino could do what he does. It's why Jimmy Kimmel can do what he does. It's why I can very um, boldly and aggressively assert that, hey, let's go. Let's do an influence off on selling you know, anything I believe in with integrity, even if I don't know it. Tell me the subject, let me ask two questions, and I'll go compete with something you've been selling for 20 years. Because there's unconscious competence. So our conditioning here is, is, not, is to condition you away from that you're coming here to get a quick tip. It's that we're conditioning in your unconscious competence to process, influence, and self-mastery. It just becomes a part of how you condition your responses. So if you're like, oh my God, like what's the tip for today? Like there's not a tip for today. There's a conditioning, a conditioning for today or conditionings for today, but it's not a tip for today, okay? So but there are check-ins. The check-in we're gonna drop into is, um, what's an ecosystem merger? So Vivian, right? Vivian, what's your best assessment or definition of what an ecosystem is? My best understanding of it is that I will pair up with people who either share similar or similar goals or talents within what I'm trying to achieve, even if it's separate, but it's still a common goal, whether it's to set up a business of my own and someone else wants to improve theirs, even if we're not from the same vein. And together, we pool our talents to not just ideate, but to use the process mastery that you're bringing forth to us so that we could achieve our goals. Right. So who are you, do you know Oprah Winfrey, um, her, her world at all? Like, uh, like her, do you know who Oprah is? Oh, yes. Okay. Do you have any thoughts of who may have been one of the greatest beneficiaries in history for merging ecosystems with Oprah? Um, well, right, I know Prince Harry ecosystem merged with her on something recently, and I know Gail King is a friend and has done quite well for herself. Absolutely. So who do you think did even better than both of those? Who, like, who launched into the stratosphere from kind of nowhere working with Oprah? There was Rachel Ray. There was Dr. Yes. Oz. Yes. How about Dr. Phil? And Dr. Phil, yes. Forgot about I love him. all those examples. Mm -hmm. So what did Rachel Ray, Dr. Oz, and Dr. Phil all get from merging ecosystems with Oprah? What did they get? They had access to the network. They had access to people. They had someone who helped build up their own businesses and empires and they have a future. Yep. They could pick up the phone and call anyone. Yeah. So they got ecosystem value, massive expansion from the social proof of Oprah. Yes. Yes. Two, they got so many clients that they couldn't even possibly handle them right for their own primary business. So instead they ended up as group coaches. And the Dr. Phil show is essentially a group coaching show that people don't pay to watch, but so many people watch it that Dr. Phil makes money because the show makes money from advertising. Does that land, Vivian? Yes. Yeah. Like that's what happened though, right? Like, do you get that or no? I, I do. I'm so yeah. starting to get it because you're whittling it down for me. <laughs> yeah. So like for everybody they became such insane ecosystem value that they became stage and microphone coaches, trainers, entertainers, that they had their own shows and stuff and audiences 
they were so massively organized, such mass numbers that they didn't have to charge. They got paid from advertisers for just doing their thing because they had such an audience that Oprah created for them. Now, they had their own talent and skill, right? They had their own talent and skill, but no Oprah, it doesn't happen, okay? It may happen in a different way. It doesn't happen like that. The accelerant was unbelievable. Now, Vivian, I have a different question though. What did those people do for Oprah? Because for Oprah, Dr. Phil seemingly had very little or Dr. Oz or Rachel Ray, like to give to Oprah. But what did they give to Oprah that made it so there was an actual ecosystem merge? Because they did give something to her. So what was it? Hmm. I, the only thing I can think of is that they gave her a diversification or, yeah. I don't know. I yeah. love it. They gave her the diversification and they gave her entertaining, talented people to teach her audience stuff. So they were entertaining, talented people who taught her audience stuff. And that's a value because the Oprah show was about putting on entertaining, talented people, or just entertaining people, or kind of weird people, right? Unique people onto Oprah's show that made the audience want to watch because cool stuff was happening. Dr. Phil, Dr. Oz, Rachel Ray, Tony Robbins, all of those people and others were people that gave that gift to Oprah. Does that land, Vivian? Yes, it does. Yeah. And that's what an ecosystem merger looks like at its, the, the pinnacle, the pinnacle. Now on the feet in the ground, Fernando, we talk about Rob Gill. What did Rob Gill give, get from me? What did Rob Gill get from me? What Rob, what Rob Gill got from you was massive, heroic, unique identity boost, ecosystem value, meaning, access to people, and a stage and a microphone, and many other things, but I'll narrow it down to those three things. And those things gave him what? Those things. In our language. In our language. In our language. What it gave him was. In process, process marketing mastery. So understood. you merge ecosystems, and what do you get when you merge ecosystems? You get higher quality sales meetings. Pause. Did Rob Gill get higher quality sales meetings because he spoke on my stage in front of doctors? Yes. Because he was now working with doctors and other professionals. Because sometimes lawyers came to my events, doctors came to my events, accountants came to my events. So you are correct. He got a higher quality of sales meeting. And did it change also something else? Yes. Two what things. It? Yeah. It, it gave him... Uh, more frictionlessness, meaning they were more interested and curious in who he was. And it got him because of more sales meetings that leads to more revenue. Yeah. So, so it got him a higher quality because we didn't say that one. You just said it, but like hit it. It gave him a higher quantity of what? Frictionlessness. Yeah. Being defined as people already knowing who Rob was and curious to talk to him. So that gave him more what meetings? Quality sales meetings. Yeah. And a higher, more, meaning a higher quantity of quality sales meetings. And then you said, finally, that leads to what? More what? More revenue. Right. And there is an exponential differentiator when you get revenue, more revenue, you could choose to reinvest it in your business or take it out and have more disposable income to go on trips to Grand Cayman, to buy a new car to buy a second home or first home, and you have more disposable income. That's what we're doing here at Unblinded. How do you, in your process mastery, generate more ecosystem mergers for a higher quantity of quality sales meetings to generate more sales, to have more money, to create more disposable income so you can do the things you want, like I can do Unblinded. If I didn't have the disposable income, I couldn't have done unblinded because I'd be so busy working inside my law practice. It gives you the time, time freedom when you create scale and leverage and you don't have to have 300 contacts 
than 300 uh, times of contacting somebody like Rob me over seven months, the time and energy, as well as the monetary opportunity cost, as well as then moving into Chris Crone, he merges ecosystems with because of his connections to me and because of Rob's influence mastery, because influence mastery matters too. And therefore, Rob goes from 300 touches over seven months to six touches over 24 hours. And he has now merged ecosystems with Chris Crone, generating frictionlessness where he speaks on Chris's stage, runs YouTube videos, generates high volume sales meetings with much less effort. Um, and then of course those people can generate more sales meetings themselves and Rob is building, growing, scaling, and it takes him less time. And ultimately this is all about the magic. What do you contribute to? I get to stand up in a room full of people and I get the blessing of, um, making a donation that is, um, meaningful and if not shocking to some to save girls from sexual slavery. And I get to do that and feel amazing about doing it. I get to, I get to do anonymous things. Um, I'll say it here. I'm not looking you know, for any significance, just, but there's things I do that I don't publicize. I don't often talk about the fact that in the New York drug, drug and rehab place, uh, drug and alcohol rehab place, there's a building named the Calgary dorm, right? Um, I don't share that I paid for uh, a funeral that I read about in the newspaper that people couldn't pay for a funeral. And, and, I, and the people, it was anonymous and they never knew who it was. Um, so the magic, and then I've taken my family, as you know, to the Cayman Islands and, and done all the things I do with my kids and experiences that were mind blowing for people in my family that would never have the income to even get to Grand Cayman to do anything, let alone the types of experiences we had the Ritz Carlton with dolphins at Rackham's, swimming with the tarpon at night, um, have an amazing experience with their five kids. Most importantly for me, I taught one of my cousin's kids to swim. Um, I, I took one that was afraid of the ocean and he was out snorkeling 200 yards out off the shore, no boat, we just swam out. And by the fifth day, he was like comfortable being 20, 30, 40 yards away by himself free diving down to the reef that rose up to about 10 feet below the surface and he was able to free, free dive down 10 feet. We still talk about those magical moments and on and on and on. That's what this program is doing and which is a layout of what you receive when you're in the formula and what we mean by more time, more money, more time, more magic. Now, quick check-in. Um, Fredo, quick time check. Great. Thank you for that. We are about eight minutes out and I want to remind you of your coach Lazak story. And I wanted to just consolidate um, what we just spoke about into five steps. Uh, I'll let you drive. Okay. So really quickly, an ecosystem merger means a common group of people um, organized by a thing or leadership. So my practice mastery event was an ecosystem. Oprah is an ecosystem. You're an ecosystem. Um, the Chamber of Commerce of the Meadowlands, with Jim Kirkless is an ecosystem. Meadowlands Chamber, Eric, Gateway, ecosystem. Tony Robbins is an ecosystem. Keith Cunningham is an ecosystem. Um, the United States is an ecosystem. So organized group, Cub Scouts are an ecosystem. PTA is an ecosystem, locally, nationally. So the question is, how many ecosystem mergers do you have? And put in the chat. My hallucination is most people, other than their client base, have less than on average one. Like the majority of people have zero. Rob Gill had zero. He had referral people. He sort of had one with an accountant. Sort of had one, right? So maybe he was one. How many do you have? Because the game we're creating is you go from zero, you go from zero to 10, one to 10, two to 10. So Rob is more in the zip code of about three right now. So the game is for Rob to get to 10 and then get his team to get from on average, probably 0.5, less than one to 10. That's the game we're playing. And so just in the chat, put how many ecosystems are you merged with right now where you have at least some level of frictionlessness defined as you could promote something to them, you are promoted to them, it's easy for you to book a speaking engagement webinar or something to that group of people, right? 
And then separately, what's, what's the quality on a scale of one to 10 in your business? Because the game is to get those 10 to be at least of an eight level of quality to accelerating your business. So the first answer is ecosystem number and then quality. Okay, and let's put that in the chat and we'll do a little analysis of that. Um, second, we're gonna help you build that through the Unblinded Business Accelerator and your work here being on the huddle and the Real Raw. So the tools are Unblinded Business Accelerator, Real Raw Role Play, don't watch it every day, do not watch it every day, and we're never gonna tell you to watch it every day, but you're gonna use it consistently. We'll talk more about how to do that soon. And you're on the huddles. That's the game for you to make more money and less time with more magic, okay? Now, the biggest thing that Coach Slazak taught me, I'll tell the Coach Slazak story and we'll take this thing home. Because Erica asked a question this morning, who's full of love, full of goddess, wants to save everybody and help everybody and give to everybody and so many beautiful people do and so do I, okay? That is death to our acceleration, our business, because the biggest mistakes I have made in my life have been thinking I was doing somebody a favor by trying to rescue them and save them. And I ignored the lessons from Coach Slazak very often, and it led to me um, being in marriages, uh, or at least one marriage I should not have been, and lovingly perhaps two. Um, it led to me being in uh, business partnerships that were extraordinary mistakes. It led to me allowing clients to stay around too long that and ended with them really becoming uh, quite uh, engaging, quite unhealthy unfair and un lacking integrity behaviors towards me because they felt like they were losing control of me as I began to put in boundaries because boundaries, I didn't have boundaries in the first place. So I have learned the lessons um, from the very simple lesson that Coach Slazak taught me. We say love people unconditionally with boundaries. Dimple suggests I say with integrity. So I'll go with integrity so they don't sound antithetical. So loving people unconditionally with integrity. Here's my, my, one of my best stories. I broke my kneecap my freshman high school year of football. Freshman football meant everything to me. It was the first time outside of my family, I felt like I belonged. I felt like I had a tribe and I felt like I was deeply connected. And maybe that's not true. Because what happened was I moved when I was in fifth grade and I felt like I had a tribe there. I was president of my class. We had our first election to have class president. Going into sixth grade, I would be president. We had the election on the last day of fifth grade and I was moving. So I was elected class president going from fifth into sixth grade and my parents told me I was moving. So I wasn't gonna be president and I cried when I came home and I was heartbroken. I moved to a new town and I, had, I was nobody and had nobody. I felt completely disconnected and disenfranchised. And I probably went, into a state of at least sadness for sixth grade, for seventh grade, and even for part of eighth grade. I ran for class president in eighth grade in my new town, Emerson, which I came to love to no end. But the first three years, I felt such pain of isolation, disconnect, and a longing and a missing for my prior town, right? Where I was like, you know, a leader. And so for those three years, it hurt. And I ran for president in eighth grade and I did terrible in my speech. I, I think I've told that story to some. And I don't get elected. Uh, not only do I not get elected, I don't think anybody voted for me, except my girlfriend. And I don't even know if she voted for me. I was horrific in my speech. So I was super down. So a transition happens as we all get ready for, for high school football and athletics. And we're lifting together and there's like a tribe being created. And it's an incredible feeling. And it it was the first time I felt like something belonged. And so we start freshman football and I'm doing, I mean, I'm, I'm doing great. I worked hard. I was an unbelievable self-master. I was playing like a lunatic. And we play the first game. We scrimmages, we dominate. People told us we couldn't. We're too small, not going to be good enough. And, and like something really magical and special is happening under the insanity of Coach Slazak, who's one of the most scary people I've ever met. Note, I don't want anything to do with him, want to run away from him when I first met him because he was that scared one to quit. My parents told me, no, you can't. You're not playing next year, you're not quitting, okay? So we go through all this and now we're a tribe, we're a team. We are winning at halftime, blowing the other team out at halftime, crushing it. Coach Lazak comes in screaming at us, you haven't done anything yet. How do you think you're celebrating? It's only halftime. 
ta 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 we finish the game, shut out, crush them, dominate them. And we are like, oh my God, this works. We're winning. Like this, the teachings of this man, like it's real. And he gave us like, he gave us approval and validation. And he showed us his true heart, which was to turn us into what he knew we could be. It was incredible. Our second game is in the weekend of a Jewish holiday. So we don't, in, in my town, we had a substantial Jewish population as well. So we don't play uh, the game on Saturdays um, in, in the Jewish holiday, right? So we play the game on a Monday. On that Saturday, I decide to go go-kart riding uh, in the afternoon when I would have otherwise been playing a football game. I crash into a brick wall and I break my kneecap. And I don't know it. I walk away from the, the site and I think I just have a bruise and it's swollen, but I think I'm going to be okay. I go to the doctor on Monday. I have a broken kneecap. Coach Slazak loses his mind, says how selfish I am, how ridiculous it was that I would take that risk for myself and the team. And he's like furious with me and wouldn't even speak to me. Over time, that gets repaired. I go to games. I cheer my team on. And I am committed, even though the orthopedic uh, doctor says there's no way you're going to come back for the end of the season, which is only two months away. It's impossible. And I am committed. So I come back. And the, the week of the championship game, the freshman championship, and nobody thought we could even play in, and still nobody thinks we'd even possibly win against the mighty, ferocious adversaries, the Cresco Cougars, who had been defeated since they were in third grade, had gone 53-0 and in their entire career to this date, never been beaten, and now we're going to play them, and they are mockingly tell us they're going to dominate and destroy us. And they had every right to, because their running back weighed 200 pounds, as a freshman, our largest player starting on the field weighed about 150 pounds, maybe 160. And we didn't have many of those. So I come out of the locker room, taped up, ready to go. And it's the Monday practice before the Saturday to play Creskill. And I know that we're going to come out and I'm going to play and get ready. And my mindset is there. I've done it. I'm back. Okay. I go to the field. Coach Slazak comes over. He's like, you know, hey, Sean, how are you? I'm a coach. I'm ready. He goes, okay, let's see. He pulls somebody out. We haven't even done warm-ups. And he goes, Sean, here's the ball. Go. I want you to run and do a tackling drill with this guy, who is one of the bigger guys on the team. And, you know, aggressive, good tackler, good player. And first play, I hesitate. He lights me up and destroys me. Coach Lazak goes, let's try again. Second play, hesitate a little bit less. Still get lit up, right? Third play, get lit up again. And Coach Lazak goes, blows the whistle, looks at me, and just shakes his head. I knew he was right, and a tear starts dripping down my face under my helmet. And he says, Sean, just go back to the locker room. And I walked back to the locker room, which was the grad field at Emerson High School. It was about 200 to 250 meters from where I was to get to the locker room. And I just, I wept the entire way back to the locker room. And he would later tell me in a video we shot on YouTube together that he just didn't want me to be a distraction, hurt the team. And I wasn't ready. And he was right. And it hurt. And it was the truth. So what ecosystem merging is about, Erica, Fernando, Vivian, everybody here this morning, is about making sure that people are like the right combination, not just because you like people and love people. Like Coach Lazak loved me. Coach Lazak has asked me to be one of two speakers at his funeral when he passes. I played for the man for one month, six weeks before getting hurt. But I was there every day supporting my team, cheering, whatever, did all the right things. And he sent me home weeping and crying to do the right thing for the ecosystem, for the ecosystem, for the outcome. So as we go forward together, there's two things that you're gonna to need to adopt. One is the ability to be Coach Lazak, and two, the ability to be me. Meaning, I didn't hate him. I didn't blame him. I accepted the truth. I still supported the ecosystem. I still cared, and I came back with a vengeance the next year, right? And I ended up catching the winning touchdown pass our senior year, won the league championship, all these different things, many more beautiful stories. But I still believed in the structure and the leadership and the truth. So can you be Coach Slazak and tell people the truth, Erica, the truth 
in Zeus. Not he didn't yell at me, he just shook his head. No, like this is the decision, this is what it is. And can you be me and accept the truth and come back? Come back healthy, strong, powerful, more skilled, more ready. Because we're about to build hierarchical structures of leadership, not fixed on who came in first, not fixed on who, like, who is like, liked by people, but who's in integrity and ready to generate more ecosystem mergers of a higher quality, more higher quality sales meetings, more sales to generate more disposable income to do something that's never been done before. And that's where we are. Fernando? Awesome. Um, I'm going to narrow it down to five points, kick it back to Jared and call it a day. I love these huddles. I love process mastery. And I love ecosystem merging. For everyone who maybe is their first time, and I know we have a lot of um, continued members of our ecosystem here, Sean is not saying you need to merge with Oprah Winfrey. He's not, not saying that. If you can, hey, call us. We want to merge with her too. What he is saying is six things, and I want to narrow it down to these things. I'm not simplifying what he said. I'm, I'm looking to give you something that you can walk away, count, and measure on a post-it note by the end of this call. Number one, it's six categories. Number one, how many ecosystems are you merging? Number two, what is your level of frictionlessness with those, with those ecosystems? Come back to more calls as we explain what that means. Number three, how many quality sales meetings are you having? Number four, how many agreement formations are you having? Number five, how many follow-ups? And six, how are you repeating this like a lunatic? That is what Sean said. He said to do six things over and over and over. That's how he has scaled his law firm, it's how Jared has scaled Synduit. That is the process. And final, final. And that's how Adam, how Adam went from zero to 500 in his last company and took it from three to $700 million, which may be the ultimate example. He's the master and he's the one teaching me the power of counting and these specific KPIs. And I love his genius for it. And for everyone here, listen to these words. You've been here for a long time, and I'm speaking to the people that have been repeat members of our ecosystem. When you say you're going to come here to learn, and if you haven't been doing this yet, it's because you're waiting for Sean to prove that it works. That's like a bold, disruptive statement. If you're not doing this yet, and you've been here for more than three months, it's because you're waiting for Sean to prove that it works versus doing it. Yeah. And my recommendation- By the way, if I haven't proved that it works- like, look at my life, look at Rob Gill's life, look at Michael Smiken's life, who got a $1 million bonus check. I don't know what else you need to see, but go ahead, Fernando. That's all. So my, my challenge to all of you is stop, because listen, everyone says it, it, things take time. Choosing to do something takes time. Choosing happens in an instant. Stop waiting for Sean to prove it. It's real. The time is not in four weeks, six weeks when the business accelerator is done. The time is now done back to you sean yeah so listen time block make your list we pick up there in the conversation tomorrow jared final final and vivian thank you so much for being here today what do you got jared final final awesome job we have a wonderful real role role play today with two very special guests one of which is henry rinder more than 30 years of public accounting experience He's a CPA at Smolin Advisory, serving on the executive committee, certified in financial forensics as a fraud examiner and is accredited in business valuations versus Bob Bianchi, who is the founder of the Bianchi Law Group, one of approximately 250 attorneys in New Jersey that is recognized as an expert in criminal trial practice by the New Jersey Supreme Court, frequent legal commentator for multiple national TV media outlets. These professionals are going head to head on the real raw role play today at 3 p.m. Eastern time, 12 p.m. Pacific time. And the, the registration information has been posted in the Zoom chat many times. In addition to that, make sure that you are signed up at www.unblindedbusinessaccelerator.com. www.unblindedbusinessaccelerator.com. This is not just another Zoom. Please realize that. This is everything. Uh -huh. This is a program that could be thousands of dollars, and it's not. It's free, and it's an opportunity for you to see how to use Unblinded to build your main business by doing what Sean just spoke about, yeah. the ecosystems. Jared, Jared, I paid $10,000 for one-day GKIC program. 
I paid $60,000 for six months of coaching from somebody that you are partnered with in Synduit, right? This six week program is 10 times more valuable than both of those two things I paid 70 grand for combined, guaranteed. And I, I don't diss either one of those. They were both worth the 10 and the 60K. So I wasn't saying they weren't. This is worth 10 times that guaranteed. This is worth more than my Columbia education, scene hall education combined, and it's free. Why are we doing it? To give massive value and to blow the world up with what Unblinded actually is. So, Jared. Awesome. And Neil? developed an entire sales kit to support you once you sign up in getting nine ecosystems to join with you and to go through this experience with you. Because in the first week, we're going to talk about what it means to actually build your ecosystem merger group, like build and expand it. The second week, we're going to talk about how to deploy your multi-channel communication plan. So how are you communicating with your ecosystem merger group? In the third week, we're going to talk about merger marketing. So what does that look like to start deploying marketing mastery with your ecosystem merger group? In week four, we're going to start to transition from transactional to ecosystem merger. Many people get stuck in transactional. They say, oh, we're merging ecosystems. I was on someone's podcast. That's everything but ecosystem merging. So that's where we're gonna teach you in the fourth week how to, trans how to transition from transactional to ecosystem merging. In week five, we're gonna talk about this new, absolutely fascinating marketing hack that creates massive growth for you and your ecosystems. And then in week six, because we know that there are hundreds, probably thousands of people yearning for this already, we're gonna teach you how to actually make money by helping Unblinded grow and reach more people. So that's what the curriculum looks like. This is everything but another Zoom. This is a program that you can attend live when Sean and I are creating the content, or you can log in to the Unblinded Academy and watch the content after the fact with lifetime access while gaining access to the community as well. Back to you, Sean, for some final final. Hey, it's Ecosystem Merger Monday. Tomorrow on Trajectory Tuesday, we're gonna talk about 10 by 10 and seeing the vision of 100 being far more powerful than 5.4 million. Have an amazing day. Thanks. Now it's time to break through and crush fear and distortion. What is the one zone action step that will help you most today to make more money in less time and with more magic and contribute value to the unblinded ecosystem? After you crush it, then head over to our private Facebook community www.unblindedmovement.com to share your big win for the day. If you feel great about the Unblinded Huddle, please share your win for today and any questions you may have for us, along with a five-star review so we can reach more like-minded people like you. And if you have not already subscribed, please visit www.unblindedhuddle.com be part of our live ecosystem audience for each morning huddle so that we can help you see what you don't see about the fun, excitement, and magic of exponentially growing your sales.